It is Class Creatives, and in this video, we'll discuss how the Spider-Man game series uses Autodesk Maya to produce incredibly stylized animations for its most recent installment, Spider-Man 2. Many of our students are curious about the software and techniques that were used to bring these cutting-edge animations to life for the highly anticipated franchise, which is making a comeback in its most recent chapter. Spider-Man 2's latest trailer is looking very promising and picking up as a true sequel where the previous 2018's Game of the Year nominated title left off. In this video, we'll discuss how these award-winning animations were made with Maya Autodesk, paired with new motion capture tools, integrating dynamic poses to remain true to its graphic novel source material, how live-action reference footage is used to inspire original acting choices, and the keyframe animation process. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is expected to implement a new dialogue technology that has been in development for several years. Uh, also, there is some very cool dialogue technology coming up in the next game. Comic book posing was a critical first step to capture the essence and appeal of Spider-Man in video game form. Production workflow consists of previs in 3D, performance capture mocap, layout animation, visual effects, lighting, sound effects, which would then work with the animations to create the final product. Insomniac forgoes the traditional storyboard approach and dives right into 3D for previs and layout to speed up the production process. This is commonplace for other major studios such as Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica as well, and if you haven't seen our videos on those production pipelines, we'll have a link for you. Previs typically is assigned to one animator, so they have ownership of the scene and freedom to add their own visual take on the material. These can then be implemented into the game engine and hookups can be tested. Hookups refer to the transition from cinematic to gameplay, and these need to be thoroughly tested for seamless transitions to the user. Planning where cinematics transition and hiding load times are meticulously planned between the art and engineering teams to create a seamless transition during gameplay to the user. Choosing a specific point in the environment in the shot helps lock down cameras for when the load transition takes place. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. With Class Creatives, under 3D software used to create Spider-Verse and Marvel Spider-Man game assets. They offer a top-ranked game design curriculum online. All courses are taught by industry veterans with experience from studios such as Disney, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Google, and more. During the entire process of animation and motion capture using Autodesk Maya by following the methods used to create Spider-Man's animation. The full AAA animation workflow is explained in detail in their Masterclass courses. Learn professional workflows such as 3D character modeling, utilizing industry standard software such as ZBrush, Autodesk Maya, and Substance Painter. The entire character design workflow is covered from start to finish in their masterclass offerings. Extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all of your project needs. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. Layout consists of taking full advantage of the environments to tell the user the full story of the shot. Composition is critical here to convey the strongest storytelling elements to the player. To ensure cinematic storytelling is compelling, cameras need to be placed to deliver the most emotion possible to keep the player engaged at all times. Long takes were created to support the action, removing the need to constantly cut from each angle. Once the previs layout is approved, motion capture will be shot for the core movements in the scene which will then be cleaned up and possibly keyframed by the animator. Motion capture has its limitations when the characters had to kiss on screen, the head movement camera limits the natural movement necessary to capture this moment. So animators work their magic to seamlessly blend the mocap with natural hand keyed movements. Action sequences are often captured with two actors for accuracy and realism. To confirm that attack movements other than the normal punching and kicking could be done, animation tests were constructed. Stylized movements such as sliding under enemies to dodge and attack were also created in test form before implementing final animations into gameplay format. Creative ways to disable enemies were also crafted to entertain and engage the player. Cinematics are compiled in an editor much like Unreal Sequencer where tracks can be rearranged and retimed for cinematic needs. There were over 90 minutes of cinematics, 12 animators, and over 2 years of production time on the original 2018 Spider-Man video game. Customizing and adding tools for camera work aids the visual cinematic appeal of the cutscenes. In the attribute editor, custom sliders were created to further enhance the control of the camera work. 
Camera shakes and handheld effects are easily added to cameras by adjusting attributes in the channel box. Camera lenses were created based on cinematic layout workflows from previous previous animators at the third floor to match those of the Marvel feature films. Oftentimes with different stages and lighting, cleanup is necessary for additional animation passes as specific types of lighting can reveal odd face shapes, neck or head movements that need additional animation passes for polish specific to the lighting of the final in-game shot. Catching mesh and wardrobe errors are common during production and ample time is necessary to catch these anomalies to ship the polished product for the targeted launch release date. A few years ago, I wrote in my journal on the very first page, I am Miles Morales. For Spider-Man Miles Morales, it's not quite a full sequel, but Spider-Man Miles Morales is a standalone game that's bigger than you'd expect from an expansion. Ten months will be needed for production. Traversal varied from Peter Parker's movements as Miles is a younger and newer superhero. 100 traversal animations were authored to support this storytelling gameplay element. Stylistically, the goals of the Miles Morales was to incorporate a seasonal shift to winter, introduce a neon noir aesthetic, and showcase the culture of East Harlem. In the original Spider-Man, there were six tricks that could be performed versus the 30 tricks that could be executed in Miles Morales. Over 120 transitions were created to ensure smooth gameplay to the user. 15 venom attacks and 20 unique finishers were also created. Cinematic workflow production process was identical to the original Spider-Man, however facial motion capture was outsourced to Cubic Motion, who is owned by Epic Games, as the cinematic team had a lower headcount compared to the first game's cinematic team. An average page of script translates to 35 seconds of footage, which could vary from one day to three weeks to final animation production. Top-down blocking allowed cinematic scene prep and environmental creation to lock in cameras and movements for the cinematics. Motion capture would then be shot by the actors for cinematic performances. Layout is created by the animator to start to lock in cameras, apply motion capture to the 3D character assets, and confirm gameplay hookup continuity. Other than cinematics, all gameplay was animated in step keys to simulate the look of Into the Spider-Verse. 65% of the game was motion captured and roughly 25% of the game was hand keyed. When the pandemic occurred during the middle of production, a Canadian studio was hired to shoot actors necessary for the rest of the production. Save the Cat was an idea board which resulted in one of the most memorable characters in the game, rewarding players with a Spider-Man suit with a cat and a backpack which would also enable special Spidey Cat finishers. Finger motion capture was utilized for ASL moments in the game which gave a unique storytelling element to the missions. To promote the game, Blur Studios would create the first initial pre-rendered cinematic trailer which is commonplace for high profile AAA game franchise releases. We have a lot of students who ask us why Maya is important to learn in the game creation process. We get a lot of questions if Blender can be used just as easily for AAA production as standardized industry software such as Maya, and we hope that this video sheds some light on why Maya has become the industry standard for game production. One last thing, if you had dreams of working on the next Spider-Man, Wolverine, or whichever game Insomniac Games may be developing next, you'll want to brush up on those animation and Maya skill sets as they typically look for experience with Maya-based animations. So although Blender and other programs are becoming more and more powerful, Maya still is the cornerstone to creating these AAA franchises. Of course, it always comes down to how great your animation is on your reel, and not the tools you utilize, but it's important to keep in mind why certain tools are utilized in production. Well, that about wraps up this video on how Spider-Man through the years utilizes Autodesk Maya, and why it's an important integral piece to the AAA animation game creation process. There's been no real change to this workflow for the past several decades, and its use is still prominent today. We hope this video was informative on the development process of the franchise over time, how it has evolved, and how these AAA masterpieces are created. The newest entry in the series looks better than ever. Will you be playing on release day? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.